This tutorial will explain the three options for spar separation when using two spars. Using two spars requires a base spar and an end spar. The separation between these two spars can be expressed in three ways, relative, absolute, and moving baseline. In relative mode, the location of the end spar will be expressed in XYZ coordinates relative to the position of the base spar. Mainly, this is useful when making measurements using spars mounted in a fixed formation on a vehicle or boat, or to make a single measurement on easy terrain without moving the spars. All modes require you to enter the base to antenna measurements for both spars, as described in the offsets tutorial. Using relative spar separation also requires further offset measurements, always measuring from the base spar to the end spar. Remember that the power button always defines a spar's forward direction. Also remember the spar's internal reference frame, where forward is positive x, right is positive y, and down is positive z. If your two spars are set up on the same x-plane, it means the end spar is not forward or behind the base spar. You will need to measure the y-plane distance between them, and determine whether it is negative or positive from the base spar to the end spar. In this case, since the end spar is to the right of the base spar, the y value is positive. If your two spars are on the same y plane, you'll have to determine the value and sign of the x offset. In this case, since the end spar is behind the base spar, the x value is negative. Measurements can get tricky if you need to measure both the x and y offsets, as in this example. In this case, a measurement must be made of both the x and y values, not just the distance between the spars. Let's do a quick example. In this case, the two spars share one plane, but the base spar faces forward one direction and the end spar faces forward in the other. What's the offset? Offsets are always calculated relative to the base spar, so the base spar's forward direction is the one we care about. As such, the base to spar x value will be negative because the end spar is behind the base spar and the y value will be zero. Two final tips. First, if your spars are mounted at different levels or on uneven ground, you will need to calculate a z offset where down is positive z. Second, if one spar is tilted in dual spar relative mode, the offset measurements can get very complicated. When using relative mode and two spars, be sure your spars are both upright or tilted slightly at the same angle as when mounted on a vehicle. Once you have entered the offsets for the end spar, you'll need to set the geospatial position of the base spar. Most often, using a GNSS rover is ideal to automatically position the base spar. Absolute spar separation assumes you have access to geospatial coordinates for the positions of both the base and end spars. Mainly, this is useful to make measurements in areas where you have already measured geospatial positions, or to make measurements near a total station. In absolute mode, apart from calculating the base to antenna offsets of both spars, no separation offsets are necessary. Instead, base and end positions will need to be keyed in or measured. Moving baseline mode requires no measurements or entries. In this case, the baseline between the spars is automatically calculated. This method of spar separation allows the most freedom, since you may move the spars independently on any kind of terrain with no offset measurements. Moving baseline mode requires satellite visibility, the presence of the RTK option for the Aztec boards of both spars, and a base spar with base mode enabled in the firmware. Only spars that have Aztec boards with the RTK option can use moving baseline mode. Using an R8 rover on the base spar is one way to obtain a geospatial location on a base spar in moving baseline mode. However, ORI also supports network RTK. If the internal RTK box is checked, the software reads corrections from an internet source. If it is in wireless range, the base spar can have centimeter level geospatial accuracy without an external receiver. The spars must always be synchronized in dual spar mode. Connecting the spars with a cable will synchronize them, but you cannot use moving baseline mode. This is a less expensive way to enable dual spar measurements. If your spars have Aztec boards, they will synchronize automatically without a cable, and each require a small L1 GPS and GLONASS antenna attached. 